Well, hey, how y'all doing out there today? Uh, listen, as, as much as I try to stay away from politics, uh, it, it's one of the most divisive methods out there to keep us fussing and fighting and, and jumping on one bandwagon and jumping on the next and changing your mind and looking like a hypocrite. Politics will make the average person look like a hypocrite because a lot of times it makes you go against your morals or your home training even sometimes or who you are. So in an attempt to kind of keep the division between the tribe down and, and, and uh, I don't know, basically bring some awareness to what's really going on down here. I always like to bring up some history. I always like to show y'all how things have been in the past so you can see how we're being manipulated today in the, in the present and maybe how we can change our future a little bit. So um, I wanted to bring up the fact about Trump's wall down here and it seems to be, I mean, he's talked about it since before he was trying to get elected and, um, uh, uh, it was one of his biggest platforms, which has nothing to do with nothing. And uh, since he's been there, it's been one of the few promises that hadn't been broken because <laughs> it hadn't been fulfilled. And it gets blamed on this and that. But I, everybody wonders, well, why, why, about, why is the wall now? Why is it so important now? Because when you had Colorado and Washington, well, just the whole um, use of cannabis and hemp uh, being legalized and medically uh, acceptable in America has cut the the drug traffic trade across the border almost in half. And for real, most of the people coming across the border now are trying to get across the border illegally, really are war refugees because war is brewing down there in South America and Central America like it always has. These people have been trying to escape that lifestyle since the CIA, since the Bush administration and the Reagan administration, since the end of the Berlin Wall, which are the, you know, the, 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 the great, the wall over there in, in Germany, uh, came down in 89. I mean, there's been a heavy cocaine trade and, and wars because of that. Uh, those people have been trying to escape for the longest time, but now it's escalating because of what's going on in Venezuela. And this is why I want to talk about the history of border walls. All right, you can go all the way back to China, y'all, the Great Wall of China. That was two superpowers fighting each other, and they built up this this wall, this divisive uh physical divisive wall and you can see it and it's you can see it from space actually and um uh but the ideology behind it the the reason behind it was was they was it was war and they were making a a separate spot you know these people lived this way on one side this this people lived on the on this way on the other side and um so th th that's kind of one good idea in history of it but you go back and you look at the korea being split in North and South Korea. That was because of the Cold War, the superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union and China all battling each other where well, they didn't do it like World War II style with bombs and taking out whole cities. No, they went to these little countries and they battled out and got those local people involved. And there you go. That's how there was a North Korea and a South Korea. Then we turned around, we went and did it right in Vietnam. You see, there's North Vietnam and South Vietnam. One side lives one way, communist. The other side lives the other way. In 1961, they built the Berlin Wall that I was talking about. This was this was at the peak of the Cold War. Um, they separated Germany after World War II because we lied to the Soviets uh, and told them we gave them a bunch of promises we didn't fulfill. They actually defeated, helped defeat Germany. Uh, they were, as a matter of fact, without them, we would not have defeated Germany. But we lied to them like we do everybody else in war and um, left them out. So they said, "Well, hey, we're just going to take this." Um, this was a, these were two superpowers fighting, superpower war. So what did they do? They, uh, Germany's a, a fine example. Well, they just they took and they built a wall and they separated it. One side was communist Germany and the other side was 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 free of you know Germany, but it was American run. So um, the the Mexico the Mexico wall southern border wall everybody the infamous Mexico southern border wall they got a border wall why can't we have one? That was because of the Central American drug wars. And, and it was also to separate, uh, America helped them with that because they didn't want, um, they, they didn't want any communists uh, or, or any of the, uh, the well, like that are down there now in Venezuela and Argentina. The Soviets have finally got down there in South America. You know, uh, during Kennedy's administration, we had the Bay of Pigs incident. We wouldn't let them bring missiles over. That, that's, not the, that's not a wall, but that's what I'm talking about, separation, drawing lines in the sand, saying you're not going to come past this, you're not going to come past that. So I'm wondering if anybody is taking this into consideration when they're really putting up a lot of pressure and making it seem like a, a national security issue for immigrants and drug trafficking, 
to, 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 to put $5 billion in, into uh, our, our, our southern border wall or even have a wall down there. The solution to this has always been simple, and it's a solution with all things, peace and working with others. You wouldn't need any walls. You wouldn't need any borders. You wouldn't have to draw any lines in the sand. But we, the regular people, the 8 billion that have to live on this planet, we're run by these superpower elite, and they think that they, well, they, uh, technically, in a way, they do, because they have built the war machine. They play with the war machine. They, ha they have built empires, and they want more. And when you start seeing countries, like from way back from the Great Wall in China, uh, during the Cold War, doing the walls in, in Korea and Vietnam, in, in Berlin, Germany, uh, uh, southern Mexico, and now I, and now us. It's just where they're trying to say this is ours and you're not going to come past it. Walls never stopped anything. It didn't stop. Matter of fact, it, they kill more people than, it, than it's worth having because the activity at those walls is considered to be a demilitarized zone. And, and this anything goes from any side. So people get killed there. People still get through there. They'll dig tunnels. They'll do any. People are going to seek freedom. The wall's not going to stop it. The wall is nothing more than a physical border for the superpowers that run the, have run this planet in the ground and murdered our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, our mothers, our, our children in all these wars. It's nothing but a marker. If we're truly... They, they, they call the president of the United States the leader of the free world. As a, as a kid, when I first heard a teacher say that, uh, and I believe, it was, I believe it was about Jimmy Carter. Now, Jimmy, Jimmy Carter just became president. And she said, now Jimmy Carter is the, our president. He is the leader of the free world. And I, I raised my hand, and the teacher said, what you want, Billy? And I said, well, if the world was free, why well, we need a leader? So around 12 years old, I, I, I saw through that lie. If the world was free, why would we need a leader? If we were all doing what we were supposed to be doing and weren't, and weren't about our own business, why would we need borders? And why would we need secure borders in the freest country in the world? Huh? They've taken that part of your thinking out and replaced it with fear, pure fear, fear that somebody's going to come across that border. They, man, they have made it ISIS, Muslim terrorists, um, uh, M13 gang members gonna come over here and behead everybody, all the drug traffic, all, all, the, all the human traffic and all this, that and the other. None of that would exist if it was already an open border and it was peace and free trade and we work together. Now, who wants the wall? Who really wants the wall? Somebody in Chicago, somebody in San Francisco, somebody in the Dakotas. I mean, who really thinks that we can't, even we the people alone, with the way the world fears us for being armed and being crazy and running around in the streets. Who, who, who would even think that they could come over here and invade this country through, through Mexico? Who, who, who wants to believe that we don't control the Mexico, that, that the new world order federal government here in America does not control the Mexican government and the Canadian government because they're our border countries. Y'all got to get real about some things because all you're being fooled into right now is talking, arguing points. Arguing points is what I should just call them because you're not even talking no more. You're just arguing, saying, oh, I want it this way and I want it that way. It all comes down to a left-right political thing, just like the climate, just like our health, just like vaccines, just like GMO super farms, just like the poison water, just like the, just like the deregulation of the energy companies now and they're shitting in our face. It's all been politicized because politicized comes to a left-right argument means there's only two points. There's no outside points. It's only what this side thinks and that side thinks. So before you jump on this bandwagon about the wall, think about the fact that another, the Cold War never ended, number one. The Soviets didn't just quit having nuclear missiles. The Chinese didn't back down a bit. So the Cold War, was that was a lie. When Reagan came out and said he ended the Cold War, Russia just went broke for, from the Afghan war that they were in for 10 years, their little Vietnam war sort of kind of, where they went over and fought the Taliban and lost. So it, caught, it broke them. So this is just nothing to me. What I see from historically, another border wall is being built or being, being politicized and, and, and thrown out as a fear thing. And that means that these superpowers are just gearing up for what they're going to do again. And their new theater, they've already used Korea, They've already used Vietnam. 
They've already used Europe. They've already used South America. Now they're going to use North America. That's on about the last continent left. They ain't used to split up and make a North and a South or East and a West. You see what I'm getting at? This is superpowers fighting. You won't see this on the news. You won't, you won't see this in, in, on the Internet. They, they fight behind the scenes. And this time, it's a banker's war. And I'm going to give you a little hint right here at the end of this. I'm, and I hope y'all stuck through with this to the end. Because it's the BRICS nations, y'all. Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And the only reason South Africa's in there is because it's a strategic location to control the whole world with a, with a great naval armada. So you got to look at what's going on. Now they're on us. We're not fighting them overseas no more. Why you think they pulled our troops out of Syria? Huh? Why you think they said, oh, we're not going to mess around in the Middle East no more. We, we're pulling our soldiers out. Where are them soldiers going to go? The border, the new borderline, the, the new Great Wall is right here at the south of the United States. So where's the next war going to be? Y'all might want to think about some of these things for you. You know, it's, 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 it's like you take the, the, the shiny trinkets they throw out there for information. Shiny, shiny, shiny. Let me see that. Let me see that. And all the time, whatever they're telling you, it's something behind the scenes and it's something dark and evil. And it's something always 180 degrees from the truth. So please remember that. Take the politics out of things. Politics don't make a damn. That's, that's opinions and talking points. Reality and history. History is important so we don't repeat it. None of those walls worked. All of those walls, even when Kennedy went there in 61 or 63 and said, I am a Berliner and, 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 and was like making this a thing. Like we're, it, was, it was the Cold War. It was like saying us against them. It ain't that way. We've got to stop that mentality because it, what the American people never really hated the Soviet people. Our leaders said hate them and we jumped on it. Is there really a problem with, with Mexican people coming in and out of America? Do the people say that or do the leadership say that? Do they lie about the drain on just the, the whole illusion and the psyop of getting you to go along with basically immoral and criminal activity across this planet? That's the war for the mind. This wall is part of that. You have been played if you think it's even needed. You have been played. The solution to all the bad things going on in the world is peace. And that's easy to say, I understand that, but it don't mean it's less real. The only solution to everything going on is peace. And the only way we get peace is through our unity and our brotherhood, our coexisting together and coexisting with this planet. So we don't all die and we don't all kill each other and we don't all kill everything else living here that has not a goddamn thing to do with it. Our war kills a planet and we can stop war because we are the soldiers. We are the ones that build the tanks. We are the ones that build the bombs. We are being misled. Think about that. I love y'all. Peace through knowledge and knowledge through understanding. You get that? I love y'all. Peace and don't, don't live in fear.